Lord, you know. You listen on the place of word. Radio is the best. Yeah, and love. And I'm gonna tell you something. When you correct and discipline and love, even when the person doesn't want to accept it and is being defiant at this at that time, mm-hmm. the seed you plant is good. Mm, yeah, it's righteous. If it's done in love, even if they don't receive it, then the seed that is planted is positive. It's righteous. Trust me, it's gonna be a fruit. Yeah. yeah. Ready to confront the spiritual battles and societal challenges with wisdom and boldness? Today, we tackle spiritual battles and challenges with love infused discipline, emphasizing prayer as our potent weapon. Hello, and welcome to Plays on Word Radio, where we discuss, analyze, work, and play on the Word of God. That's right. Thank you for joining us on this excursion today. Let's join Pastor Teddy, (laughs) also known as Fred David Kenny Jr., the founder of Plays on Word Theater, as he does a deep dive into the Word of God. Word of God, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Josh Taylor and Katie Kenny. Welcome to every one of you listening to Plays on Word Radio. That's right. My name is Fred David Kenny Jr. And we are continuing this excursion. That's right. We are broadcasting from our Southern Command in North Carolina. We are going to continue with the... uh, Discussion we were having with all the guys from Horizon Christian Fellowship in Brooklyn. Now, uh, some of you guys might have to, you know, listen a little more closely because these brothers, they have a pretty hard um, New York accent, especially my man, John. Um, But it's all good. It is all good. And I'm praying that you will continue to be blessed by these men of God discussing being men of God and what does that look like? All right, so we're going to continue with this and I pray that y'all are blessed. You're fighting half time. Mm -hmm. When you get in the room with him, the the throne room, as you know, Mike was saying, and you're having that relationship. So you're saying that our battle is is not carnal. It's not fleshly. It's in the spiritual realms against powers and principalities, right? And How much sleep do you think Elijah got? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. How much sleep do you think Moses got? All right? These guys. These guys ran. How many? You think You think he didn't miss meals because he was busy, these guys? Yeah. Right? I imagine they were running, what we would say, running ragged. You right. know what? They did the work and the work sustained them. Man, yeah. you can't live on bread alone. You yeah. have to feed yourself spiritually. Yeah. You have to be in prayer. Otherwise, you, you, you know, you're not going to make it. Right. Yeah, and even like when you mentioned the midnight hour and praying in the night, um, you know, there's a testimony, this guy named John Ramirez, that he was deep into, you know, the spiritual realm on the other side. Yeah. And, you know, at night is when all the evil oh, yeah, comes yeah. out, right? Darkness. Like everything that's not supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. When did the people come out? At night, mm-hmm. right? And spiritually, there's so much happening. Um in those hours yeah. that need to be covered in prayer and just being like the watchmen that are just, um, when God prompts us yeah. um, to just pray in those hours because there's so much in our community and our neighborhood that we're not even aware of. Not even aware. That's going on that he needs us to stand in the gap for, you know? And he kind of talks about that in his yeah. testimony because he was deep into the spiritual things. And he so. You know, he would talk about how there were demons that he had placed over these neighborhoods yeah. of oppression, yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of selling drugs, of just prostitution, and all these things. When do they happen? At night. At night. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I mean, they're, they're straight up having seances on TV now. Oh, at the yeah, Grammys yeah, 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 yeah. and the and the, to, the Tony Awards, all these. You know, at the halftime show, they're straight up. There's evil stuff going on. I mean, like straight up evil. They're they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Yeah. When I was a kid, yeah. it was like, yeah, you know, uh, it had you had to keep it behind closed. The, the doors. devil's trying to get in music, and he got to play it backwards, and to hear yeah. the devil worship and all that kind of stuff. And I think it was Billy Joel. Uh, I saw a clip on YouTube where Billy Joel was saying, um, you know laughingly saying yeah back in the day 
They were saying the devil's going to get your kids uh, because the devil's in the music. And then he stops and says, they were right. Mm. You know, because it's true. It was tr it was true. But now it's so blatant. Glorify it. Mm. Right? Yay, homosexuality mm. in this world. Mm. Yay, um, gender confusion. Give approval to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like we, we support it where this, that's the world's stance. We're afraid to be men and say, no, that's wrong. Yeah, we can there's, that's cowardly because we don't want to offend. Listen, Jesus straight up. I mean, he said the most of family. He said he offended everybody. He was like, listen, man, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the, the Pharisees and the scribes, you're not getting into heaven. You've got to be holy as my father in heaven. is. Holy. I mean, he, he and then he said, you know, I'm the way, the truth of life. Anybody, you know, nobody comes to the father but by me. He said like a bunch of stuff, man. He said, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh. You know what I mean? And even the disciples were like, yo, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Jesus always went for the heart, right? Mike and I were talking about this. Everybody he spoke to, he went for the heart. We were yeah. talking about the rich young ruler, how he, he <laughs> yeah. did all these things yeah. right, yeah. this and yeah. that. And he was like, oh, sell everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't care about his possessions, this, this, that. Right. He knew in his heart, okay, yeah, yeah, But you got an issue. You like your stuff. Yes. And he called it right up. He did the same thing. You like your position. You like, the woman at the well, yeah. Mike brought that up yeah. as we were doing too, yeah. right? She's talking about the worship and this. And he gets He's right like, no, 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 no. Stop with that nonsense. Stop, Stop with the political <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> the political correctness. This is your heart. Boom. And when she came back, right, she's like, he knows all this stuff. She wasn't condemned. She was convicted. And there's a big difference between... Conviction, we were talking about this. Conviction and condemnation. There's no condemnation for us in Christ. But there's conviction. The Holy Spirit is not about to shove something under the rug. He calls it as he sees it. And, and what he wants us to do is he wants us to call it as he sees it. Call sin the way he sees it. That's, that's true repentance. That's wrong. Lord, you're right. That's wrong. I'm wrong. Now we can do something. Now we can. That's, that's a man of God that God can use. But a man of God that's sugarcoat and stuff. Yeah, so God, God opposes the proud but gives grace to, to the, the tumble. tumble. Right. right. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Mike or Angela. I wonder if we guys were talking about like uh, meekness is not weakness. It's a big difference, man. Meekness is humility. Uh, there's an underlying current of when, when it comes to Jesus, he says, I'm meek. You know, take my yoke upon you. I'm, I'm meek. What, what's insinuated there is all power under complete control and he's it's just power under control and the man of god i'm telling you paul what did he say in romans 8 the whole creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of god to be revealed well we are revealed I think the um, way god and i think the only get that you know, the like, whole creation is really waiting and out to, to see that man. the men of god that, that stand and i think we're going to lead it's that a way so yeah before a regular man would suffice yeah. A regular man could contain what's going on. Regular masculinity could contain it. Now you need a mighty masculinity mm. because there's more evil. Evil has raised up. Yeah. It's like we're so, and what we're saying is not, it's not nothing outrageous. It's just that the world is so dark. Mm. Now, even if you light, if, like if you, if, if the room becomes dark, if you light a match, mm. You know how bright a match is going to look in right. the room? It's not because the match is a big light. Right. It's right. just that the room is darker. Mm. <laughs> that's a good, that's so a good. what we're being called to do is not like it's like when we be called mighty man, it's not like he's saying for you to do like something that's like so big. It's like, no, just stand firm. Stand firm. That's why that's why I went through this. Scripture. Just stand firm. Be vigilant. Like these simple things, because. It's going to stand out big because the world is dark. That's a great point. There's more that's sin. There's point. more darkness. There's more this. So that's why he's like, I'm not telling you to, when you battling, it ain't like you going, no, bro, it's just do the abide basics. Abide in him and let like, him. Abide in him, do the basics because in this world, it's going to stand out because it's so dark. That's why I was like, be a man. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to say that. In 1600, when men were chopping trees no, and hunting, no, no, <laughs> this message would not go nowhere. Right, 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 in 1600, right, right. men will look at you like, "What? what? I'm yeah. manlier than you, bro. <laughs> I'm the one who caught your food." Right. You understand what I'm right. saying? But when you're living in the world where everything is non-binary, transgender, this and that, 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 being a man is everything. The basics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's every it stands out more. That's what it's attacked. Right. So that's why right. And that's why, you know, Christians is like, you know, it's not saying nah, but just that's why the message I was like, just be a man. Being a man alone is the biggest thing out here. Mm -hmm.
couple of thousand years ago, being a man was that's normal. Everybody was men. Right. You right. can find a man on the corner. Right. You'd be like, yo, come here, man. Right. I need to chop some trees. Let's right. go. Every man can chop a tree. No, it ain't like that. So just yeah. doing just being a man is gonna stand out. So that's what it is. And I think it's gonna look like we're mighty men. When, it's gonna, it, when right. in actuality, we're just being men. We're just being, being men empowered by the spirit <laughs> of God. Right. You're just be right. You're just being the man that God has called, called you, you to, to be. be. Right. And the world is so, and it's gonna look, it's gonna look super. And, and, I, and I it's just like what Moses did in, mm. in the land of Egypt. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's Moses good. did everything with a staff, bro. Right. And I think that spirit that's in the world it has infiltrated the church, where unfortunately even uh, yeah. men, Christian men in the church, don't lead. Mm. And who's leading and who's most active? Mm-hmm. The women. And, that's it. you know, men have taken a back seat. And There's a certain just... level of engineering that's going on, though, because for the last 15 years, every commercial, think about it, every commercial you well, see, it's the, all dude, the husband's always a goofball, a screw up. A it's piece. all a setup. Like, this is this is something the enemy right. has been planning. Movies and, and everything. The man is always the he's always the idiot. All these commercials. It's the dad. You never, you don't rarely see a dad being a man. Never be the idiot because Mike was talking about this earlier. If you choose to lead, you choose to be responsible. Yep. Men don't want to be responsible. Exactly. They don't want to be accountable. Yep. Okay. And what? this is the problem with this. Everybody's a victim, and it's nobody's fault. That victim. Mentality. Nobody says I made a bad decision, yep. and now I got to suffer with this for thirty, for forty years. Okay. Yep. Wow. Nobody says oh, I made such a bad decision. The consequences are extreme. Yes. Whether it's in again, it's gender world, whether it's in the financial world, I yep. got a half a million dollars in debt, I can't pay it back, oh, it's everybody else's fault. Yep. Everybody no, else's. we, and granted, we get deceived, right? That's what the enemy does. But when we get deceived, when we make bad decisions, when we sin, whatever it is, we are accountable for mm. it. Now, I pray for, I pray for grace, I pray for mercy, I pray for divine intervention. Mm. Not because God should fix it, mm. because I deserve it. But well, grace is not what that's, that's, that's not so that's why I asked for it. Yeah, but why, like, men do not the, the want part, responsibility, was, so they being, gave up leadership good point. Together, like, in order being to avoid responsibility. Is responsibility. <laughs> that was a great line. <laughs> you know so what true, I'm saying? Right? That is that had that is what I've it's learned for the past year and a half. The Lord is just like be responsible. Yeah. You understand? Know it's something that, like my boy. I also like how you say, you know, when I turned twenty, I was a man. Right. But now I'm 40, I'm a grown man. You are grown, man. Like, like, grown man. And that's when I realized you th- there's no excuses for no, nothing. Nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Nobody wants to hear it at that when you're there. Nobody yeah, owes you not nothing. nothing. Nobody owes you nothing. You don't owe nobody nothing. Like you realize Like you're like, not young and dumb anymore. Yeah, you're well, not allowed to, you know. Like, and, and that's when you and, and it's and it's just that you you know, like and it's something that's so amazing is like you don't choose your gender. <laughs> Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like the Lord, when he made you a man, he right. made you a man for man. a reason, bro. There's a reason he made you a man. Yeah. So you have to stand in that manhood. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, being a Christian man, yeah. dog, because what a man is now, like you you, you see in, in the media, like they can't even define a gender now. You know what's crazy? <laughs> they want to they give these kids hormones. Exactly. And I think it was Joe Rogan or somebody on a podcast recently asked, uh, one of these one of these guys said, "So, if the person is born a woman, born a female, but they identify as a man, then why do you have to give them hormones, testosterone? What will they become if you just leave them alone? They'll they'll, they'll become a woman. Mm. If they're born a woman, they're going to become a woman, regardless of what they identify as. Why do you need to give them hormones? Just right. leave them alone and let them become." And the, the person had they had no answer to that. There's a lot of ridiculous logic that has been dumped massively on yeah, the and it's all because it's from the it's, you're not in the word because from the very beginning the word made a clear distinction. Yeah, that makes sense. When he dealt with the animal, like before there was Adam, right. he made a clear distinction. This he created clear. male and female. Like that, the gender genders was the first clear mm-hmm. distinction that he had when he did yep. creation from the yep. animals. Mm-hmm. To, to human yep. humankind. You understand what I'm saying? So, again, it's just people... But we're the ones that are bigoted and hated, uh, hatred-filled. And we're the ones, if we hold that position, and one of you guys, or all of you guys, actually, I think all of you said it, they're coming for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. The positions that the Bible holds puts us directly in opposition of the world system 
that is mm-hmm. growing and growing and growing like a fungus. But it's antichrist. It's it's antichrist. It's it. yeah. Yeah. They, and so all it's all it's all coming all where we won't be allowed to say what we're, it's it's we're this close. They're all preparing for the antichrist, and that's all to set the stage for him. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's all to set the stage for, yeah. for the Antichrist to come. And these are natural things. You know, we were talking uh, on the right up uh, out here how, you know, Adam's out there and Adam is, uh, you know, looking at all these animals and this and this. Yeah. And what's the first thing he says? Where's mine? Right, right, right. Like, like this no. is a natural thing that just a normal thing that anybody can figure out, right? Where's mine, right? Yep. That was the first thing that wasn't good in the garden. That, right? God saw everything was good, but it's not good for man to be alone. Mm-hmm. So he made a helper for him, woman. And Adam figured this out, right? Like Adam, <laughs> in the garden, in perfection, yeah. still yeah. figured out yeah. that there was this, and there was this distinction. And they're going after our children it's because, sick. again, sick. like he said, we're not men of God. We're not teaching our children. We're not being examples of children, right? As Angelo shared about everybody was identified, son of so-and-so, son of so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew who they were, their lineage, what they came from, what stock they were. Oh, yeah, those are the so-and-sos. They are spear wielders yeah, 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 yeah. because from generation to generation, they teach them spear wielders. Well, right. we need to be wielders of the sort of truth mm, generationally yeah. brought down so that we know like you were saying like um that the, the one whose sword was stuck to his hand yeah. we need to have that level of training yeah. because it goes so crazy that this child who we all agree can't make a decision on voting right. can't enter into a legal contract yep. can't buy alcohol cigarettes drugs all this stuff but can decide their gender it, it, ridiculous it's, logic. It's, the logic is not there. And unless we teach our kids to question and say, where is the logic? Okay. How does this line up with God's word? Mm. Because that's where the truth there is. There you go. Right. And unless right. you teach your kids, because they're just absorbing and okay, okay. Because right. that's what kids do. That's what they do. That's what they do. And, and we as the fathers have to make sure that what's going through them is filtered properly through the word of God. I love what Mike said earlier when he was saying you're dealing with your kid and he's like, it's very simple. He's like, let's just see what Jesus would have done in this situation and we'll do the same thing. I, I love that. I'm gonna use that with my kids. <laughs> That's the hell I'm telling you, man. I think filtering, filtering th- through the word of God, let the word of God yeah, be, the, bro. be the final court of arbitration. Because the thing, and the thing about it is because like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's always about control. It's authority. That's what people have a problem with. You know what I'm saying? Whether mm. it's your wife or your kids. At a certain point, your kids or start to have a problem with the authority you have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I constantly have to be like, well, I'm under the authority of Jesus, right. just like you. That's why you have to lead them there. Mm. Because the authority they have is the authority they have with you. That you're the problem. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? They start looking at you like, I'm tired of you telling me what to do. Mm. <laughs> so that's why from the very beginning, you always got to show them, no, this is what Jesus is telling us to do. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why, you know, that's, a, that's why that's a, such a perfect way to deal with the children. Because mm. they, you showing them that I'm under an authority too. After Unchecked you, authority. No, what yeah. happens is... This is something you're giving them now because they're not always going to be under your authority. Mm. Mm-hmm. There's a certain point where they're yeah. going to leave your authority, yeah. but they always need to be under the authority yeah, of God. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I started, started from God. You have to. Whenever I discipline my kids, I explain to them that, hey, this is my job mm-hmm. given to me by God because yeah. I'm your father. Yeah. Right? And I have to do my job because you, you were disobedient. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be disobedient. I still have to be obedient, yeah, 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 yeah. even though you're disobedient. Right. So I have to do this. Good lesson. <laughs> you know? right, right, right. And, and Jesus always has to be there. But she then it's also there. like like you would say, I don't know which one of you said it, that if it's not done through love and filth, it, it, it's junk. Because yeah. you can't say all that stuff and then not discipline them in, in love. love. Yeah. You know? You and can't say, I'm love. too tired to deal with this. I'm too this to deal with it. And you just kind of go overboard or do this. And I've been guilty of that with my kids. Yeah. You know? And you know what? It has no effect. Their behavior doesn't improve. Mm. But when you do it through the power of Jesus, through explaining to them who the authority is, that right. there is a God and there is an order, you see differences in their lives. Yeah, yeah. and love, and I'm gonna tell you something, when you correct and discipline in love, even when the person doesn't wanna accept it and is being defiant at, the, at that time, mm-hmm. the seed you plant is good. Mm. Yeah. It's righteous. You might, at that point, they might buck up, Mm-hmm. You might fight, like the wife might buck up, the kids might fight, mm-hmm. or whoever you're dealing with. Let's say you're even a boss and you're dealing with your coworker mm-hmm. or, or, or somebody that you're over. Mm-hmm. If it's done in love, even if they don't receive it, then the seed that is planted is positive. Okay. It's righteous. Trust me, it's going to bear fruit later. Because yeah, yeah. they, they'll probably be driving home like, yeah, I, like he told me what to do, but 
he was right. <laughs> and the way he did it, I have no fault against him. Yeah. That's you're, after you're, a while. You understand? After a while, they're going to feel it in themselves like, that was all me. You're above reproach. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like, what he said wasn't wrong. How he said it wasn't wrong. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit. I was just fighting. And you know what the Holy Spirit's job is to do? Convict. The Holy there you Spirit's go. going to convict them. Right. The Holy Spirit's going to be like, he didn't say it wrong. Right. He did it with love. And what he said was right. Trust me, even on the drive home, they might give you flack all day. But when they drive it home, they go, there's plenty of times it happened to me. When I got corrected in love, I might have bucked up right then. But later, I'm like, oh, he was right. Mm. And, and, my, and I got to go and apologize because not only was yeah, he right, yeah, yeah, yeah. but what made me go and apologize is to realize that this guy love me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it you who said was me to make were you me the go one, and go. You were the one who said that. You got to apologize first. Was it was, Yeah, was you got to apologize yeah. first. That's like, a, take accountability like if you're having a fight yeah. with your family, you know, the people that you love, your wife, your kids, whoever, your mother, whatever. When you take accountability for your stuff, you put yourself in the clear. They got it whatever they got to deal with even if they don't want to rectify, you know, even if they won't want to uh, 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 mend it right then and there. That's on them. So I man. sleep good at night. Yeah. But men don't want to hear that. I took accountability for yeah, what I yeah. <laughs> Men don't want to hear that. Yeah. That Listen, the marriage is messed up. The kid's relationship is messed up. Yeah. Look how many fatherless homes we got. Yeah. Divorces we got going on. In the church. Yeah, in, in the, in right. the church. Right? I'm talking about in the church, right? right? We as men, guess who's responsible to take the action to fix it, right? Now, granted, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the guidance. You need this. But Jesus is there for that. But you as the man got to step forward, right? You said it first. The man has to love the wife, Right? right? And she responds with the respect, with the, because that's what the man says. She don't respect me. She don't this. She don't that. Right? No. You do what you're, what supposed, you're supposed to do. To do. You know what? You do it, yeah. and 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 he he listen. He's faithful. He you do what right. you're supposed to do. Guess what? Like Mike saying, Holy Spirit's gonna convict her. Gonna right. convict the kids. Right. Gonna fix this. Now, at the end of the day, will they come? Will they come? That's between them and the that's Lord. That's right. But you know what? If you do it, and the Holy Spirit convicts them, very good chance that the Lord is gonna get positive response out of them that's going to restore because that's his desire to restore yeah. families he doesn't want fatherless homes you know we don't have you know in in, in the heavenly family there was no anybody any fatherless home Amen. he is the father yeah. okay we when you're adopted into that family the fatherless home right. doesn't exist it's, anymore it's that's point. his desire okay and we, the, the divorce there's no divorce the bride right. and the bridegroom no matter what there is none okay right. this is the problem, and men, we're, we're not like that. Well, she did this, she yeah. did that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to fix it. I don't want to put the work in. Nobody do responsibility. To. Not taking that responsibility yeah. you're talking about. The prodigal son, like, again, his dad mm-hmm. could have been like, oh, yep. you're worthless. And he could have gave him his, yep. his mm-hmm. inheritance bitterly. His dad didn't do that. He was Loved always him. in love. Loved and that's why when he was down and out, he remembered. Yep. He, that's why I said he remembered the way his dad treated his servants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was like, my, that's what, that's what, it showed his dad character. Yeah, that's yeah. why he said, my servants eat, my yes. dad's servants eat better than that. Not only he remembered his dad, but he remembered his dad's character. Mm. His dad always loved him. That's why he knew if his dad was a tyrant, even if he was wrong, he'd be like, I ain't going nah, back. I ain't going back. Because, nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was wrong for taking the inheritance, but that guy is back. I'm better I don't off to go back there. Yeah, I'm better off. I'm back. better off out here because my dad is a tyrant. Look how he kicked me out. Well, he was even willing to go back and be a servant. Right. right? And to give him that whole spiel about, I'm no longer worthy yeah. to be a right. son. And he didn't even get to finish his statement. And, and, and again, that showed his dad's character. Yes. Right. Do our family see that? Character. When your kid is out there in the streets, drink, whatever, doing something wrong, is he like, I'm in bad shape. I can't go and face my dad. I, I, I'm better off sleeping in some stranger's home than going home to face my dad because it's that, that you're that terrifying, you're that tyrant, you're that domineering, right? Mm-hmm. No, he's gotta be, oh man, my dad's gotta be upset, but he's gonna go, my dad loves me, you mm-hmm. know? After my dad's finished, you know, he's gonna rip me a new one and yell at me this that, and then he's gonna help me. Mm-hmm. Then he's gonna protect me. He's gonna try and fix this. He's, yeah. you know, he's gonna have mercy and grace on me. You know, yeah. I, I remember that. I remember that with my father. I remember oh, when I was a kid, I was, um, you know, I, I was, you know, just saved at that point, right? And I was still kind of half in the world. And I got drunk somewhere, and I was about to drive home, and I was like, oh. This is a bad idea. The Lord convicted me. I called my father to pick me up. Yeah. You better believe I heard it from him. You know what? He got up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Came he came and he got me. Got right? He, that's, we need to be that approachable to our loved ones. 
so that when when um, stuff happens because we're sin happens mm -hmm. we're not perfect that we can still come together and yeah you're gonna hear something you're gonna say something but we know at the end of the day they're on our side they love us they're there for us they care for us mm, and yeah. like Jesus is to us I think godly sorrow type of stuff draws you towards repentance mm -hmm. whereas the enemy wants to condemn you which drives you away from God like I gotta like Adam and Eve they were hiding you know, I got to hide. Oh, man, we messed up. We got to hide. Whereas when you're, you know, godly sorrow from the Holy Spirit leads you to God and to say, yeah, you know what, Lord, you're the answer here. And I'm, I'm really sorry. I, did, I repent. I apologize for, for grieving you. You know, that type of burden on your heart when it's from the Holy Spirit leads you to God. But when it's from the enemy, it's always con condemnation. And makes you feel like, man, I, I can't even, I don't want to read. I don't want to, I don't want to pray. I'm not answering Angelo's text. Man, I'm not getting back to nobody. You know what I mean? Joe sees this whole, this whole karate class. I'm not going. You know what I mean? That's the type of stuff that the enemy, you know, wants yeah. to do. So, all right. Well, Gentile, man, thank you very much. Wow. Praise the Lord. I got to write Angelo a check for this one. Yeah. <laughs> Plays on Word Radio. Yeah, we're here. And maybe, God willing, we'll be able to have another conversation with my brothers from Brooklyn. Can you tell us uh, about the church? Is there a website or anything? If anybody is in the Brooklyn area, they want to come check y'all out, man. Uh, horizonbrooklyn.org, right? Yep. Yeah, 195 Bay 19th Street. Yeah. Horizonbrooklyn.org, 195 Bay 19th Street in yeah. Brooklyn. Bay 19th Street. Uh, Brother Let's Angela, see. why don't you close us out in prayer, man, as we close yeah, out. Sure. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to, to speak about you, to speak about your word. And um, Lord, we pray that this encourages many men out there, men who may be feeling inadequate, Lord, uh, men who may be struggling in their marriage, men who may be struggling spiritually. We ask you, Lord, that um, you would touch their hearts. We ask you, Lord, that you would just encourage them. We ask you, Lord, that at this very moment, as they're hearing this, Lord, that you would just infiltrate their hearts, Lord, and turn them into men of war, mm -hmm. turn them into men who will risk their lives for their loved ones, risk their lives for you, Lord Jesus. So, Father, we love you, and we can't wait to see what you're going to do with this podcast, Lord, and just uh, bless my brother Ted uh, and his wife Katie Amen. and the uh, ministries that they have, their yes. hearts for you, Lord, provide for them uh, financially, spiritually, yes. emotionally, Lord, and just, just be with them as, as they move on to, to new endeavors. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Those are the dudes from Horizon Christian Fellowship. There's many more folks from there, but those, those are the men of God that are my brothers that I know. And uh, boy, they're holding it down. So if you're ever in the Brooklyn area, check them out. And if not, check them out. That is all the time that we have for this excursion into broadcast excellence. We will be back, Lord willing, next Friday morning. We have something for you then, too. Until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This program was made possible by the Plays on Word family of supporters. To find out more, check out our website at playsonword.org.